Hey everyone, welcome to The Withering Effect, episode 96. Today's date is May 23rd, 2021, and I am Duds, or Duds versus known to the rest of the interwebs. And I'm Jimbo, you may know me as Jimbo Slice 23 What have you been up to this week, Duds? I notice your notes are blank, and I don't know what you've been up to. <laughs> yeah, I'll start with why my notes are uh, blank. So we normally do the notes Saturday evening, right? Mm-hmm. Well, this week on Thursday, most of you guys, if you've been listening from the beginning, you know I've got an issue with my eye called uveitis or iritis. And it's like the layers between the pupil and the white in your eye, mine will get inflamed. It's from an immune disorder. And basically my eye swells in the socket. And when it does that... I get a white sheen. It's like looking through a piece of wax paper that has a really bright light behind it. So like you can see through it, but you just kind of see shadows. You don't, you can't see any detail and stuff. Okay. But at the same time, it makes me a vampire. I can't look at bright lights. Like it hurts. You gave us an example on your stream. What it looks like. I did. Kind of looks similar to what I see. Mm hmm. Except dark. I'm, mine's dark mode. Yeah. <laughs> mine's light mode, and it's not fun. It's very painful. Yeah. And I figured you would understand exactly when I threw that filter over top of the screen. Yep. And so in doing that, that makes sitting at a computer monitor very hard. Because computer monitors are very bright, and they're really rough on the eyes to start with. So now I have an eye that I can't focus in on detail. Like, if I try to focus and read with this one eye, I mean, it feels like someone just jabs a needle in it. Like, it hurts. And then yesterday, we had a stream day. And instead of canceling stream day, I decided to fight through it, do something calm and slow and easy. But it basically just took my eye out <laughs> for the rest of the day. I ended up just yeah. laying on the couch with a notepad, trying to do notes for the show on a piece of paper. I mean, I have my lights turned way down. It's dark in the house. It was rough. Yeah, that's kind of why my notes aren't done. I really wish Google Docs had a dark mode on yep. Firefox. It seems that it has a dark mode on Chrome, but I don't use Chrome. I use Firefox. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Really would like a dark mode. Yeah. Uh, but this week, I finished the slime farm. It's actually super efficient for how bad of a farm it is. So it's not as tall as it should be. I'm about 10 blocks too small. Uh, it's not as wide as it should be. I'm about five blocks too short. Uh. And the iron golems don't line up perfectly with the platforms. And I still get, well, three or four stacks when I'm on the server by myself a minute. Oh, that's plenty. <laughs> I have more slime right now than I'll ever know what to do with in the silo on the silo already just from working around my base which is perfect. I didn't want something that produced slime in mass quantities for no reason. Yeah, I I've, I've had plenty since the flying machines. So <laughs> right. I can always break those blocks down and stuff and mm -hmm. plus I have this, you know, huge bowl at at bedrock level. So they're spawning yeah. all around. <laughs> I was going to say when you're on my slime farm doesn't work because your base just, it's all in slime chunks for you, so. Yeah, there's at least four or five. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. But when I'm on by myself working in my base, that thing's running constantly, so it's, it's awesome. I've got more slime than I'm ever going to need already, and the silo doesn't even have its first light on yet, which is crazy. What's funny is I take your slime spawns, you take my squid spawns. <laughs> you're yeah. in the ocean i actually need yeah. to like turn that off because i have a whole double chest of shulker boxes full of ink wow yeah i mean that's that's enough you know that should be enough <laughs> with your shulker box shop finally out of shulker shells maybe you should start selling some ink yeah i could do that i mean you'd go in direct competition with the withering effect studio but ink has other purposes like book and quill Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I went ahead and got the gaming district channel done. Carl asked me to do that a while ago, and I never had any ideas in my head. And then Wintergrave made this beautiful entrance. Oh, yeah. For Ripple Island, which is what we're calling the gaming district. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, and yeah. I was like, perfect. 
that gives me a color palette. That gives me a block palette. I got this. And I was able to throw together a pretty cool tunnel design, I think, and get it to fit in Carl's tunnel. I loved it. And it, was, it was, wasn't like too over-detailed either. It was like pretty minimal. Exactly. But it just it fit perfect and it looks great. I really yeah. like it. It's such a small tunnel. Like I was going to put a ton of detail in there using some in rods and stuff. And I was like, it that it's it's a small tunnel. That's too much. I need to I need to lighten it up a little bit. Like the Ripple Island banners you see at the front of the tunnel, those were gonna be lined up all the way down the tunnel. Like it was just gonna say Ripple Island in all the sections. I was like, that's too much. It's too much. And uh I decided to just put the banners in the front. And it kind of really drew, drew your eye. Like, okay, yeah, this is where I needed to go. I'm not going to mm-hmm. fly by this this one. Yeah, didn't really think about that. It does catch your eye. That's one of the things I've noticed flying down the tunnels is people are starting to get their tunnels done, but I'll still often fly by them because they blend in with the main tunnel so well that it's like, oh, I missed it and I got to go back now. So when I did mine, I wanted to make sure mine kind of stuck into the tunnel a little bit. So it really stood out. You, nobody was just going to miss it. And I, I took that same concept over to Ripple Island Tunnel. And I think it worked out pretty well. You know who didn't finish their tunnel? Jimbo. Me. I didn't. <laughs> I thought it was funny because you started your tunnel before I did. And I finished my tunnel and the gaming district tunnel. <laughs> yeah. Just going to rub that in Jimbo's face a little bit. <laughs> That's, I deserve it. Deserve every bit of it. Well, your tunnel is so short, and it's in the open area. It's so easy to just fly through the north tunnel and then turn, or not north, the south tunnel, and then turn into your tunnel. Mm-hmm. Your flight path is just easy as pie. So I under I understand why you haven't done yours because you really haven't needed anything. It's in a warped biome too, so you don't have to worry about piglins and hoglins attacking and stuff like that. I I had a gas spawn. Just beyond my portal. Oh no. To where it could it could catch you. So I was thinking, man, do I gotta close this in? I wanted it to look similar to my base on in the overworld, but I might have to enclose it a little bit because of that gas. Or some way, you know, spawn proof it back there. Just one little area. But it got me a little nervous. What I would do, since there's not a lot of glass tunnels, because Croc's right next to you, but his tunnel is all kinds of concrete. Mm-hmm. I would go ahead and get some stone because I know you've got a buku amount of that. Yep. And uh, offset your walls like three or four blocks out and then just do some stone walls so that way when it comes time to build your tunnel, you can just build on top of the stone. And if you want a glass window or something, you can just go on the other side and break the stone. That's what I ended up doing with the Ripple Island Tunnel because it was hoglins and piglins like crazy, like fighting each other. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm going to die here. <laughs> so I ended up going on the outside with a bunch of stone and just went like three or four blocks past where I wanted to build and enclosed everything in stone. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I mean, it'd make it safe. Yeah, I, I was good and safe. But man, it was disconcerting here. The, and just pigs wailing in the background. That was supposed to be better, but my nose is stopped up. Yeah, other than that, I had nothing much going on. I did design what I call my fix for the bone meal on the tree farm. It's going to take, it's going to be a big episode. So I don't know if it's going to be one of those, it takes two weeks and I go ahead and knock the whole thing out. Or if I do it in parts, I don't know. I'm still drawing it out. That's how far behind I am. Mm. Yeah. How about you? What have you been up to this week? Well, uh, you mentioned you had iritis. Yeah. I got tendonitis in my bat and my biceps. I mentioned <laughs> last week I've been I've been wanting mm-hmm. to go to the gym. I went that Friday, started Monday. You know, I usually do my chest and triceps on Monday and Thursday. Mm-hmm. Tuesday and Friday are back and biceps and then leg and shoulders Saturday and Wednesday. Well, after Tuesday's workout of biceps and back, I thought I was going light, but then I realized I can't lift what I used to lift. And I'm approaching 35 years old. So yeah, after the gym, you know, you, your arms don't go straight anymore. They kind of bend because you know, you, you're working them out. And I saw this. That means coming. you weren't going light. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought I was, but one of my last sets was uh, 
these hammer curls and I'm barely getting the the uh the barbell up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that what it's called? I feel like it's something else. Dumbbell. Yeah, so I finished my workout. Everything's like fine through the day. I'm sore. This is normal. You always get a little sore after a workout, especially from so long. Mm-hmm. I woke up and I could not move my arms. My arms, I couldn't like, I, I couldn't straighten them out. They were bent, and even bent, they were sore. Yeah. So I go online and uh, I, I come across this tendonitis, which is comes from your forearm all the way up to your shoulder. And he pointed where the tendon is, and that was where all my pain was. Mm-hmm. Couple days of putting uh, this BioFreeze cream. It's kind of like a h- icy hot. Yeah. But a little, I don't know. I know what it is. Yeah, it's more expensive. But uh, yeah, you put it on there. I, I use that three times a day. And uh, I've been trying to stretch it, trying to you know work them out to where my arms are straight. I, I got, I'm good now. I got them all straightened out. Mm-hmm. I'm not having that issue anymore. Though, you know, when I do stretch, it, uh, I could still feel it just slightly, but it's so much better than before. And yeah, just want to make sure people take my advice and stretch before they work out. I don't think I stretched enough. So yeah, that's a must. I have a guy who is straight up doesn't believe in stretching. He thinks stretching causes more harm than good. Oh. And I was just like, okay, I can tell you never played sports. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I did leg day yesterday. I was able to go back to the gym Saturday, do my leg day. I missed three days from the gym in a row because I wasn't I wasn't going in there injured and make it worse. So I did my legs and shoulders yesterday, and I stretched a lot before my legs and after mm-hmm. my leg workout. And legs, leg workouts are the most... Uh, painful, pretty much. You get more sore from leg workouts than anything, at least in my my view. Yeah, I was gonna say in your view. <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel fine today. I'm okay. It's a little sore, but I've been worse, and it's nothing compared to what happened to my bicep. So, yeah, make sure you stretch. I uh, I recommend it. Yeah. See, I'm the opposite. I I I was born with elephant legs. Like my thighs are ginormous my calves are pretty big too even when i was super skinny in high school like weighing 135 i had big legs like the leg press or whatever i was doing 630 something pounds on that like it was nothing like i was i was a soccer player for a long time before i did football and then yeah doing football that's a oh you can you can use your legs and here you go here's leg press and yeah it got to the point where i had freshmen standing on it while i was pushing it wow because we didn't have enough weights i got long legs that's the other thing i don't have long legs i'm I'm a short guy i'm only 5 10 so i'm not a big guy but my arms are super weak bench press you need me to bench press 100 pounds i don't think i'll do it <laughs> but leg press i'm good i can do that <laughs> yeah that was never my th- i had chicken legs at one point but i filled them out a little bit but still pretty sore well, I mean, you look at my sports career, I was a soccer player, so I didn't really use my arms that much. I was never involved in throw-ins because I was always marking. And then when I ended up playing football, I played wide receiver and everyone's like, well, you got to use your arms to block and stuff. It's like blocking's hips. As long as you keep your hips square and your hands yeah. locked, no one's getting around you. So I didn't really need arm strength for that. Yeah, that's a good point. A lot of hip, a lot of hip action. Yeah, and I mean, soccer, or as Europeans will yell at me, football. Hips and soccer and football is huge. You need to be able to control your hips. So if you're going into sports, that's the one thing I would suggest working on is being able to lock your hips and swivel your hips. If you can turn that switch on and off at will, you're good. Yeah, I really thought about that. But um, I was going to say, should we move on from sports talk? Carl's probably like, I am yeah. so bored. <laughs> I was going to say, even though I had tendonitis in my biceps and stuff, I I actually finished my episode. Uh-huh. One thing I could do is go on the computer with my arms. Um, it actually helps stretch them out because I got to reach for the keyboard and stuff. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm just picturing you pushing the mouse around with one finger <laughs> instead of your whole head. <laughs> it was almost like that, like. I had uh, like I was like you know what is it T Rex arm in my yeah. setup, but eventually mm-hmm. I was able to move my arms out. But I end up I I started detailing my tower. I got a good bit of detail in. I did see that. 
and I'm changing it a little bit now. Mm-hmm. You know, I, nothing's ever good enough because <laughs> you know, I find one thing that I, I don't like and I change a good bit. So the other side of the tower is changing the window portion, at least. So When you did those windows, I immediately went, he just made elytra wings. Yeah. On his tower. I was like, man, those look a lot like wings, but mm-hmm. it looks cool. I did have a note. When you said you were going to put a glass dome on top, I wanted to mention like, hey, you should probably make that a shallow dome instead of like a half dome. So instead of it being, I don't know, 10 blocks tall, make it like four blocks. Okay. Just because of uh, the shape of your last tower. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that was an elongated dome. Yeah. So yeah, the shape didn't work out. I think a shallow dome, especially when you're, because you said you're going to bring those uh cross spikes as i'm calling them yep i do want to do that you're gonna bring those up above the dome i think that would look really cool yeah yeah shallow dome that that does sound sound ideal Mm -hmm. especially i was gonna put glass under the dome too that could you know i could do away with that and just do the shallow dome just do one layer glass yeah yeah false symmetry is a good thing she has a lot of domes this season and they're all kind of these shallow, wide domes. So I would check her out. Watched a couple of them. I haven't really noticed. But yeah, I'll have to look at that. Oh, definitely go back and check out her season. I think she's wrapped up most of her base this season already. So good time then to look at it. Good time. But yeah, that was about, that's about it. I did start on my next episode. I have a big time lapse I have to go through on replay mod. Yeah, been working on it every day now. I know, I I know you've been working because I got like twelve stacks of bottles the other uh-huh. day. I went over there. Yeah. I was like, ooh, <laughs> got me some bottles. There should be more, more coming. <laughs> Jim was just like, I'm only a bottle opener to him. Yeah, he just wants me for my bottles. Usually for my <laughs> bottles. Uh, don't worry, I'll repay you in bees. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, should we move on to the news? We don't have a lot of news. Yeah. Uh, so they went ahead and we've got another snapshot and the snapshots are getting small. Um, there are technical changes coming with these snapshots. We don't really, I, obviously they're still focusing on caves and cliffs. I have a feeling that's still their main focus. They're just trying to wrap up some of these side parts to go ahead and put 117, which eh, I'm fine with. Uh, but it's making it a little bit challenging to guess when this update's coming. Cause you said, Hey, these updates are getting smaller. June 30th, June 30th. Yep. And I'm going, mm, we still ain't got a lot of stuff yet. Like, where's my goat horn? Yeah. Yeah, we don't have goat horns yet. It's one thing Bedrock got. Yeah. And I'm on the Dock 77. We should be able to ride goats. Oh, yeah. Train. That'd be cool. We saw that you can do that in Hightail, so you should definitely be able to do it in Minecraft. That'd be cool. Yeah. Could you imagine riding a goat at a mob and charging it and hitting it with like a knockback. Yeah, having that that feature to use. That would make cool. it so Mojang's huge in the not allowing or not wanting special abilities to kind of cross over certain things. Mm-hmm. So like you have a horse and a donkey where everyone's like, well, it's kind of the same thing. Well, the donkey can hold a chest and now you can move it around. And then you have the llama that can also hold chests, but you can't ride it but you can train it. So having a goat that's rideable, would people would like, but you can only do that with a horse. But giving it the ability to ram mobs while you're riding it, so like maybe instead of a jumping feature, well, goats can jump really high, though. It'd be awesome to take advantage of that. Yeah. But I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm on the Doc, 70, Doc M77 train of we should ride goats, but I want goats to be able to ram stuff at will while I'm riding them. That'd be so fun. Could you think of the mini games? Yeah, like bumper cars. Exactly. Type of deal. Horizontal spleefing with goats. <laughs> oh, it'd be so fun. I mean, you would be on the goat, so maybe it couldn't jump in that case. Maybe that's a one downfall. It just doesn't jump. True. Could you imagine, though, when you charge up to go and ram something, it, sc- it does that scream? Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> what the heck was that? <laughs> and you go flying off a cliff. 
So back back to actual news. They they fixed the geodes. If you remember last snapshot, they said the geodes were going to be rarer. The amethyst geodes, they actually are rarer now. They're still not mm-hmm. super rare. You like you can search kind of easily to find one, but they're not like all over the place. Yeah. This is kind of what I thought it would look like if they did make it a little more rare. So Right. Yeah, they did they did fix that. Yeah, so like instead of going into spectator mode underground and within render distance you can find five of them you're gonna find like two of them now yeah and we don't have x-ray mode so it's kind of yeah i don't know you're kind of gonna have to just come across it anyway you know it's not gonna be easy to find regardless so yeah we'll see how rare they really are without being able to see yeah um if you till root to dirt now it turns to dirt and it pops the roots out, which is kind of cool. Yep, I I think they uh there was some kind of bug to where the roots were like duplicating. Yes, they were popping off, but they were still hanging there. Mm-hmm. But if when you look at it, rooted dirt and hanging roots to me are two different blocks, so it makes sense at least a little bit. It would be cool though if you had rooted dirt and hanging roots. And if you tilled the root of dirt and it popped the roots out, but you left the uh, hanging roots there, the dirt, as long as it doesn't turn to grass or something, would turn back to rooted dirt. So then you could hoe it again and get more hanging roots. And that'd be a cool way to farm it. Yeah, I don't know how much you'd use those roots. No. You're right, but... Could use them, but I don't know. I- I'm thinking about the gotta collect them all. Minecrafters, you know who you are. Those of you (laughs) with 48 million double chests of a single item. We're pointing to you guys. Yeah. Invest in trash can. I have a bouncy trash can redstone tutorial you can follow, and at least it'll be fun to watch. Yeah, that rooted dirt go into it. (laughs) Roots go into it. Yeah. Uh, Oxalotls can only play dead in water now, so that's a little bit new. They were doing it on land before. Oh, yeah. I still haven't seen anything kill an oxalotl, so I wonder, like, can you kill an oxalotl, or are they just going to play dead all the time? Yeah, are they, like, immortal? That's what I was thinking. Do they die? I imagine, like, (laughs) when they're in that state, if you accidentally hit it or something, it could... Maybe. ...kill it, but yeah. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I don't want the oxalotls to die. I'm just wondering, I've not seen it happen yet. Yeah, me neither. Uh, let's go with llamas no longer spit on people, pe- bleh, players in peaceful mode. That was a hard one to spit out. But yeah. <laughs> Can we get a drum roll or a <laughs> whatever? Uh, but I can't think of it. It make it makes sense. It's peaceful mode. You shouldn't be getting attacked by anything, including stinky llamas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a pretty logical fix. And getting on to the more accessibility and technical changes, the GUI narration has been given a little bit of a buff. Uh, so it now includes the position and usage of hovered or focused element. Basically, whenever you just move your cursor over anything, it tells you what your cursor's over. So yeah, no longer do you have to click something and then it tell you it's, I just moved my cursor and it tells me. So that's nice. Right. It's helpful for my six-year-old that can't read well. (laughs) Yeah. He might like it. We do have one technical change. Mm -hmm. They added a new NBT tag for entities that has a visual fire. Right. What is it? Visual fire. What's what's the word I'm thinking? I don't know. Tag? (laughs) Animation. Animation is what I'm looking for. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, that's going to really help out map maker map makers. Yeah, it it's really cool how they do it. I'm not good with commands. Like <laughs> really not. Mm-hmm. And and I like to play survival, I'm probably not going to use this, but it is it is definitely going to help out with map makers and uh maybe some creative builders. Yeah, to put it in perspective, the mobs or whatever is on fire is not actually burning. Mm-hmm. It's quite literally just a visual thing. Yeah. It's going to be really good for creative builds, map makers, stuff like that. I have a feeling you're going to see it in survival, 
um, you're going to see a data pack where right. it's going to be an armor stand or a name tag or something. I mean, I'm especially thinking it's going to be in Hermitcraft and people will be making stuff using this visual fire thing. Yeah, I could see that. I'm I'm a little worried of doing it in survival mode, though, because entities cause a little bit of a lag. So I wonder how much lag this would cause. It's not really that's not its intended purpose, obviously, but it's very cool looking. Yeah, and if you have fire tick off or on, it's going to be hard to distinguish what's on fire and what's not <laughs> yeah. sometimes. Like, is that real mm-hmm. fire or fake fire? I don't know. Yeah. Next thing you know, your whole house is burn, burn up. <laughs> well, that, that settles that. It was real fire. That was a real fire. Totally real. <laughs> but like I said, it was a small snapshot. We can't tell if this means they're getting close to pre-releases or if they're just focusing somewhere else. I have a feeling they're focusing somewhere else, which I'm fine with because obviously my bet date's not even close yet. Possibly. Yeah, I was looking at this <laughs> snapshot, and I'm like, are we even going to talk about this this week? <laughs> like, there's yeah. so, so many minimal changes, m- mainly changes, you know, nothing really new, but... Yeah, and they're not adding anything, it's just refining. Yeah, that's all we got. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's hop into list of comments, because we got one. They put their real name, but Carl made mention that they went by something different. Uh, they listened their, or listed their name as ESPDD. I'm going to go by that in case you don't want your real name said. But thank you so much for the comment. And it's three questions they've wanted to say. First of all, I'm a big fan since I play on Pocket Edition. You are my only way to get notified about snapshots. We don't really talk about the beta snapshots much. Yeah. And sorry for this week's snapshots. Not too much (laughs) for you. Yeah. But uh, thank you for listening and the support. It always does mean a lot when we hear people say... We love listening to you guys. Uh, the three questions is, the Warden is official boss in the Minecraft game. Do you think it should be a boss? I'm going with I don't know yet because we haven't really seen the full implementation of the Warden. Yeah, if I were to guess, I would say yes. It's like the underground boss. Like once you get mm-hmm. to that point, if you can get deep enough. And like, like you said, we don't know how they're going to implement the deep dark or how many wardens is there going to be a warden in every deep dark is there going to be more than one we don't know how often they spawn yeah or how how frequent these biomes spawn so yeah as far as i i know just from their animation and their features it seems like a boss to me for me a boss uh is one of those things that doesn't just spawn if that makes sense so you look at the Ender Dragon. Everyone can agree that that's a boss of Minecraft. Right. Well, once you beat it the first time, it doesn't just randomly spawn. You have to summon it, right? Yes. You look at the Wither. The Wither from the get-go, you have to summon it. It's just not one of these bosses that randomly spawn. So for me, the Warden has to have some of that going. For me to conclude it's a boss... Obviously, we don't know yet. We don't have enough information on the Deep Dark to fully say, at least in my terms of what is a boss and what's not a boss. If it just spawns because it's dark, to me, it's not a boss. If it spawns because it's the Deep Dark and I kill it and it doesn't respawn, it's a boss. Yep. If I have to summon another one, yeah, then it's a boss. Yep. Couldn't have said it any better. That's a good point. As of right now, from what we've seen, yeah, I would probably consider it a boss, but I want to know more before I firmly state. I would like for it to be gone once it's killed, you know, not respawn Correct. somewhere else like a spider or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Would you add, remove, replace, or change any feature about the Warden? I don't know enough about the Warden yet. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we don't know much about it all we know is it you know it picks up on movement or vibration yeah sound sound yeah can't see uh we know it's it's got does it have a lot of hearts or just does a lot of hearts of damage i don't think we know the hearts it has actually not that i can think of Mm -hmm. Uh, the first thing i think about when the when fighting the warden is you you hide under blocks that it can't reach you 
I would like for it to have a little bit of reach to where you have to dig a little deeper. Like your sword reach is just as big as its reach Mm -hmm. to where you can't necessarily use that. Maybe you can do that and use a bow because you're a little deeper. Yeah. You, you want a tactical fight. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't want the, uh, what I call the wither skeleton enderman cheaty bar. That's 2.5 blocks above your head. So they can't get to you and you can just stand there and whack, 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 whack. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it possibly has the ability to break blocks. If it does get that aggro state, you know, Mm -hmm. something along those lines, just to where, like you said, it's more of a tactical battle. Yeah. I don't know. I I would love to. There are a couple of things we saw in what do they call it? Concept art. The warden uh, playing with the oxalotl. And let's face it, they kind of look alike in the face when you look at them. Kind of like the warden is a mutated oxalotl. Okay, they've got the antennas. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of lore with that. Uh, but wardens get excited about oxalotls, like wanting to pet them. That would be hilarious. I would love that. Yeah, that'd be cool animation. Uh, the other thing is, I would love to see wardens react to fishing rods. So, like, if I throw a fishing rod out, maybe it goes and chases the bobber. So I could quite literally lead it to where I wanted it to go. Yeah. Even though it kind of makes more sense that it would hear the rail or reel of the fishing rod more than it would hear where the bobber went, being able to lead a warden with a fishing rod by thro- or casting out the rod seems like a cool way to lead it around without using a lead. So I would kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Uh, final question is, what features should Mojang add for their next April Fool's? Example, Iron Nugget, Gold Nugget, Chicken Nugget. I... I- I really like chicken nuggets. Yeah, that's <laughs> hilarious, actually. I would uh-huh. like to see that. Um, I was thinking, uh, they mentioned a tweet a while ago how they're, they want to add things to these snapshots that are more experimental and not so mm-hmm. much bringing it to the game. What if they did for an April Fool's, they added like 50 animals, you know, just for a joke, where they're going to give you a ton of animals and they're just going to be all over the place but it's also like an experiment, you know. What like what would a I want to want to say a uh, like a deer look like in Minecraft? Mm-hmm. You know, just give you a bunch of different animals. I think that would be a fun April Fools. Yeah, I could see that because they they kind of did that with the Portal World, yeah, and all that stuff. I can see that. I don't really know what Mojang thinks about. For April Fools, it's obviously do they have time to do something for the April Fools thing? Uh, when one sixteen came out, it was pretty flushed out. We didn't have a ton of bugs and stuff that they had to go back and fix. Not a lot of stuff to add on. So the bigger April Fools that year made more sense. This year, obviously with COVID and this is a big technical update. They obviously were more swamped, so the April Fools was a bit smaller, per se. And <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm good with little things like chicken nuggets, but I don't know if I want to eat 64 chicken nuggets. That just sounds like my stomach is going to hurt the rest of the day. Yeah, I think we got this question before, and it was uh, kind of off the whim. You know, I didn't see it coming first time I mm-hmm. heard this question. Uh, we didn't have too much of an answer. I do like how Mojang gives us an April Fool's prank. Yes. You know? Unlike other mm-hmm. games, it is a lot of fun just to see where they're at. I would love more Easter eggs put in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, final part of the listener comment is, I think bone mealing moss block on a block that has a mossy counterpart should change the block to a mossy version rather than replacing it with moss. To add on, the brush from archaeology should brush off moss from mossy blocks and drop it. Thanks for listening to my comment. I like the idea of placing a moss block next to cobblestone and then bone milling the moss block and it turns the cobblestone to mossy cobblestone. That makes a lot more sense to me than crafting it with vines. Obviously, the vine fix was because we didn't have anything like moss in the game, so it made sense to use vines to craft it. 
but I actually do think this is a bit of a better way of doing it. Yeah, I don't mind the way they do it now, but uh, yeah, something that does have the variant with the moss instead of changing it into moss. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have no problem with the way they do it now either because at the time it made sense to do it that way, but this is actually a pretty cool uh, replacement way. You'll see a lot of vine farms die. Yeah, right. The uh, archaeology thing, that's a that's a cool fix. You know, if you don't want moss on there, just brush it off. Mm-hmm. I do like that. E- you know, granted, you could easily get cobble. You know, if you want to take the moss off the cobble, there really isn't a need for it. You know, there's cobble everywhere. But, uh, but there really isn't a way to turn it back. So, right. It would start a a retroactive way of crafting. Yeah, but this would make it a lot easier to do and undo mossy blocks. So yeah, that's not a bad suggestion. I like it. Mm-hmm. Thank you again, E Speedy D, for the comment. That comment wasn't from our Discord, but our Discord is one of the only places you could talk to everyone who works on the show easily. Just take Brownie Bit's word for it. Everyone, your favorite sweet treat, Brownie Bits here, and I am a member of the Withering Effect Discord. It's a great place to get to know the people from the show and share cookies with your favorite like-minded Minecrafters. It's the only place to throw cakes at, oh, mm, um, uh, I, I mean submit your questions for upcoming guests and share your opinions about the game. <coughs> Add brownies! <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Sugar Rush the Discord today using the link in the show notes, and I will see you there. Thank you for the Discord ad, Brownie Bits. Speaking of the Discord, it's the only place you can get involved in the Mending Minecraft vote. This week, we ask you to choose between one of three items for us to discuss and improve, and your choices were the Book and Quill, the Elytra, and the Heart of the Sea. And the winner of Mending Minecraft this week is... Heart of the Sea by by one 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 vote. And I think it was actually a tie, and Carl had to flip a coin to see which one won. Yeah, Carl is not going to allow a tie, guys. As much as you want it and manipulate it, Carl will not take a tie Mm -mm. eventually what loses will come back around anyway so yeah but the heart of the sea had 28 votes uh elytra with 11 and book and quill with 27 as close as it gets it is few things on the heart of the sea and very few things that is Mm -hmm. Uh, heart of the sea is a rare item that can be crafted into a conduit the heart of the sea must be found it cannot be crafted or obtained by trading Heart of the Sea is obtained from buried treasure. The location is marked on a buried treasure map, which is found in ocean ruins and shipwrecks. Though you can feed raw cod or raw raw salmon to a dolphin, which causes the dolphin to swim towards the nearest buried treasure, shipwrecks, shipwrecks, or ocean ruins. And that's all we have on the Heart of the Sea. Some of that isn't even Heart of the Sea. It's just helping you to find it. So, Mm mm-hmm. It's not much to it. So the heart of the sea to me is one of those relatively useless blocks on its own. You definitely look through and we have a discussion channel for the vote. So people can throw in their own ideas on how to fix some stuff. And every idea was essentially turning the heart of the sea to a conduit conduit, and fixing the conduit. But... We were to fix the heart of the sea. I know every once in a while I'll go off and I'll do the exact same thing, kind of make a new block or whatever. But I'm, lately I've been trying to stay towards what we have. And so I didn't want to do anything with a conduit because the conduit wasn't up for vote. The heart of the sea was up for vote. And the heart right. of the sea, as a heart of the sea, is essentially useless. Mm-hmm. Its only real purpose is to be crafted into a conduit and use the conduit for everything else. And the conduit's a pretty cool item on its own. It's a light source. It can allow you to breathe underwater, allow you to view underwater. It'll kill a drowned if it gets too close. Yeah, a bunch of different features for the conduit. Right. But the heart, 
the heart of the sea. Nada. <laughs> its only purpose is to be crafted. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out ways to fix this. And I couldn't really come up with a lot. But the one thing I did have was you would need to change the heart of the sea from an entity item per se. So right now you can hold it in your hand. You can place it on an item frame. You can put it in a crafting table, but that's it. It can't do anything else than that. Mm -hmm. For my fix, you would kind of need it to turn into what I reference as mini heads, the decoration blocks using player heads. It, It needs to be a tangible object that you can place down. And I'm thinking it's like a conduit. Except it doesn't give you water breathing, doesn't give you night vision, doesn't give you any of that. But it kind of calls ocean creatures to you or to wherever the heart of the sea is. So if you put a heart of the sea in the water, fish become way more abundant in the area. Dolphins become way more abundant in the area. Drowned become way more abundant in the area. For us Java players, drowned farms stink. They're not yes. super efficient. Getting a trident is not that easy. Then again, a trident is kind of a useless item anyways. So it's not that big of a deal. But we have a combat update coming up. Jeb's been working on that. I'm kind of hoping the trident gets a little bit of a buff because it's a very cool item. But for fighting, I'm not using a trident in a fight. <laughs> that's, that's not going to happen. So using a heart of the sea to kind of draw in sea animals seems to be an easy fix for me uh, we saw exuma we're actually going to be talking about exuma for the main topic but we saw him do a tropical fish farm mm-hmm. in last season and they're a bit of a pain in the butt but how much easier would it be if you could throw a heart of the sea down and lure fish in i do have a question would it need the surrounding blocks to be active like the conduit nope it's it's not a conduit just by itself it's a heart of the sea and only a heart of the sea okay not a conduit i thought about that like maybe we can buff its power by adding stuff around it kind of like you do a beacon and kind of like you do a conduit no i just wanted a heart of the sea and maybe it's only good for 16 by 16 yeah yeah it, it gives it a use finally other than craft me into something else and to craft it you need all those nautilus shells that Mm-hmm. seem to be hard to get a hold of. Just can't. I have more heart of the seeds than I do Nautilus shells. <laughs> yeah, imagine using the heart of the she, or she, the she. heart of the sea to attract drowned so you can kill them for the Nautilus shells. And then when you have enough Nautilus shells, you can pick your heart of the sea up, craft it into a conduit, and now you have your conduit. Yeah. To me, it seems like a natural progression to do something like that. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. How you yeah. like dim apples? <laughs> I I got one apple. Um, I was thinking <laughs> because it's an item. Of course, you know you mentioned you can't really place it. Yeah. But um, one thing you could do with it is possibly make it into a potion. Mm-hmm. We've talked about dolphin's grace a lot and how it would be great to bottle it. And I think the heart mm-hmm. of the sea could give us that. You know, if made into a potion. Now, I know mm-hmm. you mentioned the conduit gives you other abilities besides that. Mm-hmm. But then again, you, the other potions you make also give you those abilities. So yeah. one thing we don't have is the uh, Dolphin's Grace. Yeah. We had talked about this on the pre-show, and I gave Jimbo a counter argument. Not because I don't like the idea. I actually really like the idea. But the counter argument would be, well, the Heart of the Sea makes a conduit, and the conduit gives you night vision and water breathing it doesn't give you dolphin's grace so it doesn't make sense for a heart of the sea to not give you night vision and water breathing but give you dolphin's grace so that was my counter argument it wasn't meant to be like well i don't like the idea because i actually like the idea but in natural progression in my mind it didn't make much sense yeah hey if you wanted to have water breathing and night vision put that on there too Super go- <laughs> Dolphin's Grace. Call it the Ocean yeah. Potion. <laughs> I like it. I really want an Ocean Potion now. I want an Ocean Potion. Just Gorgeous. for the name, I want an Ocean Potion. Yeah, it's just right off the lips. Yeah. The The only other thing I had for Heart of the Sea would be 
this came up during stream yesterday. I needed an enchanted golden apple for a banner pattern. Luckily, Jimbo here had two of them and was nice enough to lend one to me. So I was able to get the thing banner pattern. But Matt, what, it would be cool if Heart of the Sea could be converted into a banner pattern. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see more banner patterns. I'd like to see more layers on banners. I don't know how hard that is, but yeah. Yeah. I think we gave a little bit to Heart of the Sea mm -hmm. from nothing. <laughs> yeah. Out of nothing. Should we move on to the next topic? Yeah, let's go to the main topic. All right. So the main topic is a fix from last topic. So when me and Jimbo finished the episode last week, I said I wasn't happy with how the episode turned out. Not that it was horrible or stuff like that, but I felt we didn't do a good job of kind of explaining things all the way through the episode felt a little rushed we kind of expected a bigger snapshot and it didn't happen so it was a swing and a miss uh for me and jimbo mm -hmm. uh, and then you came by and said hey exuma did one of those what do you call it tier list tier list that's it where he did the 117 118 stuff not necessarily all 118 but some of the 118 stuff and i was like you know what? You're right. That makes a great way to fix what we did last episode and probably explain it a bit better of things we like and things we didn't like from 117. So this topic was Jimbo. Round of applause because it was a great idea and it definitely takes a little bit of weight off my back because I was not happy with last episode. And shout out to Exumavoid. Mm-hmm. Every week he gives us the snapshot review and everything. We do consider what he has to say with everything. He's very knowledgeable about the mm -hmm. game. So it was cool to see his perspective mm -hmm. change it a little bit. There there were some things I didn't agree with. So Yeah. It it's funny because like me and you watch several snapshot videos, but the one video we go to to review before we start a show is we watch the Exuma Void one because it's pretty condensed. It's straightforward. It's like, here's what we're looking at. And then we're like, okay, we're good. Mm -hmm. And he'll even let you know this has been changed, but it doesn't look like it's been changed. So that's <laughs> yeah. easy to carry over to the audience. Mm -hmm. But anyways, we're going to start from the bottom, work our way to the top. Mm -hmm. We're going to save our... Uh, there. There's one one... 1.18 notable yeah item we put on the list and we we both technically put it the same spot mine's a little bit different <laughs> but i see yeah so let's start with f because for the most part me and you have a lot of stuff that are tiered relatively close to each other i'll let you start with your f tier my f tier which is least favorite is the azaleas. I have azalea bushes, azalea leaves, and the azalea wood. Now, azalea wood is oak wood. I don't know if it's changed the name. I don't think it is. I think it's just going to say oak wood. Yeah, but uh, even Exuma mentioned this was a huge missed opportunity, and I was mm -hmm. like, yes, thank you. This is a big miss. Even the leaves. It's oak leaves. Like, and they're separated as azalea leaves. And I'm not big into the flowers, so I could care less mm -hmm. for the flowered leaves. Maybe I could find a place for them. And like I said before, those azalea bushes are probably going to get annoying because they seem like they're abundant. Well, I also have the quote-unquote missed opportunity of azalea wood mm -hmm. down at the bottom of my list. I agree they should have done something like that. I also don't like how most of the leaves are just oak leaves renamed. We already have that with dark oak leaves. They're still just oak leaves, but renamed. Yeah. So having another oak leaf seems disappointing, though the flowering azalea leaves, I have higher up on the list because I actually like the flower. Okay. Uh, and then my last item on F was the drip leaf. And this is not to talk bad about these items. This is just a personal ranking system. Yeah. I don't see me using the drip leaf very often. Uh, it's a great parkour item. It's an okay decoration item. It might have some cool redstone functionality at some point. But as of right now, 
I don't see me using the drift leaf for more than decoration. And then at the same time, it's such a big item that it's not going to be abundantly used. It's going to be, well, I'm going to place one here in the corner and then ta-da. Yeah, like a little bit of landscaping yeah. here and there. Oh, I, I forgot. We should also mention it's just 117 items. We're not talking about anything in 118, really. Yeah, um, this is to kind of expand on what we were trying to say last week that we, or at least I didn't do a very good job of doing. Yeah, and this would take a whole episode if we covered both the updates. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, but we need to kind of move a little bit quicker. So E, what do you got for your E tier? E, I got two things for E. Mm -hmm. Both the amethyst blocks. There's two different kinds. One grows the crystals. One doesn't. I don't like the fact that you cannot move these. They're there. They're stationary. You can't play with them. So it's kind of, mm -hmm. okay, you gave us this block that we can't move. So that's why it's so low. Dripstone block also. I don't like the look of the dripstone block. I think it's more the color. Yeah. I don't see myself fitting this in anywhere. You're saying the dripstone block and not the actual dripstone. Yes, that's different. So for people to understand that. Yep, the block. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm right with you. I have both the amethyst block and the dripstone block on E, though I don't mind the texture. I see it kind of as a niche texture, and it will have its uses and purposes somewhere. It's just not going to be used a lot like, say, Deep Slate. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have it down there, not because I don't like it, but because I notice it's going to have a specific pur purpose, and that specific purpose for me won't be abundantly used. I also put the hanging root for the same reason in there i think it's cool i like the feature but i'm not gonna abundantly use it so it's on the e tier and then i also have the spyglass and lightning rod here for the same thing not because i don't like them i actually really think the spyglass is cool i think the lightning rod's kind of cool but optifine is basically going to reduce me using the spyglass uh, mm -hmm. Exuma pointed out if Spyglass had a hotkey, then it would overtake Optifine for me. I would not use the Optifine zoom feature as much as I would the Spyglass because I actually think the Spyglass is cooler and more effective. Yeah. And the Lightning Rod, the reason the Lightning Rod is so low on the list is because we turn Fire Tick off when we play on SMP, so I don't have to worry about my roof burning down. And also, the Trident does the exact same thing a Lightning Rod can actually manually do it right i can point and pick and fling a choose <laughs> try it yeah yeah so yeah not that i don't think it's cool because i do think it's cool i just don't see me using it as much personally yeah now i have spyglass and lightning rod in my c category along with drip leaf hanging root hanging root could be an e it's like between e and c yeah I could see it being used for landscaping and stuff. Um, also, I have Spore Blossom in my C category. Uh, the thing with the lightning rod I want to mention is I think it could be used for like detailing in different ways, you know. Mm -hmm. But we don't know if the lightning is going to come through your build and strike this thing, like wherever you put this. That's true. <laughs> like, yeah, I, it'd be cool to use it for different ways, but you don't know how it's going to act or react with thunderstorms yeah i'm sure this tier list will change the second we actually get to physically mess with this stuff oh yeah i do like the spyglass um like mm -hmm. you said optifine is going to overtake the spyglass if uh if you can yeah that's my thing i actually do like the spyglass yeah. but because it's because i have a hot key with optifine i don't inventory is such a mess that it keeps cool things like the spyglass from getting used for me because that now takes up an inventory spot or spot takes away a hot bar spot exactly. we, we need an inventory update so desperately and I, i'm trying to get that across without sounding rude because i don't want to sound mean i get mojang's working their butts off but i, I hope, really hope that an inventory update is high on the list for one of the next updates i know it's not the flashy update that a lot of people are going to want. And I keep writing how much I did not want a Cave and Cliffs update. And it's because I think there is much more needed updates to give a, I don't know how to, upgrade of life 
into this game. Quality. Quality, Quality of life. life. There you go. That's that's the words I was looking for. The Spore Blossom also have on C mm-hmm. in the C tier, mainly because I could only see it being used in like certain situations. Yeah. I'm not going to use it as often. I mean, if you have that one look you're looking for, Spore Blossom could look great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's mainly just for particles. Exactly. I have Spore Blossom on my C. Originally, I had it on E because, again, yeah, it's a cool-looking block, and I'm going to use it rarely like I would use the Drip Leaf, but because it produces particles, it gives it that extra use. I bumped it up on my list. Mm -hmm. What else do you got on C? Uh, Powdered Snow. Ah. It has a bit of extra features in the fact that you could kill mobs with it and everything, but it stays low on my list because it's forcing me to carry another piece of armor in my inventory. We have inventory issues. I shouldn't have to be carrying or preparing other ways like this and stuff. And let's face it, once you get an elytra, you're just going to fly over stuff. <laughs> so, Yeah, and they don't stack, do they, powdered snow blocks? I don't know. I've not seen that yet. Yeah. Or if you just take a bucket of it. I would assume you could. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Water and lava doesn't stack in buckets. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I also have moss blocks on here. And again, it it's one of those blocks I'm not going to use a ton of. But because it's got a cool functionality, I rose it up my list a bit. Mm. I like the fact that the way you can farm moss blocks is really cool. So I put that at C instead of E. Uh, the final one is raw ores. I don't think the raw ore blocks are good to look at, even with the new texture changes. They're getting better every texture change, but to me, their functionality and in saving inventory space is way more useful than its texture. So that's why I have them on C and not F. Ooh. Because their texture alone would make me put it on F because I don't see me using it, but their functionality and cleaning cleaning up inventory space while mining, that's a thumbs up for me, and that jumped it all the way up to C. What'd you say it looked like last time? Beans? <laughs> One of the <laughs> textures was straight up bean texture, which was honestly hilarious, and I loved it, but at the same time, I'm not going to build with beans. Right. When you get more serious, the texture is not that useful, so... And there's going to be a lot of people arguing with me because some of my texture choices that are higher up on the list, they'll be like, wait, you think that texture is better than this texture? And it's like, yeah, it's it's a personal list, guys. Sorry. Yeah. All opinion. Your B list is pretty big, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. These are things that I like, but I found things better to move above. Like, I kind of started mm-hmm. with B and went from there. Yeah. You know, move things around. I do have the new ore blocks and new ores in there, mainly because mm-hmm. of the functionality. I like the fact that you can compact them and you can have more ingots inside, mm-hmm. you know, in your inventory at once. Um, it helps a little bit with inventory. Not so much the blocks. Like you said, it, they look beany. They do. Mm-hmm. I, I, I do have an idea for the gold raw ore mm-hmm. blocks for my build, but... Uh, save that but it, but it's a niche block for you you're not gonna put it everywhere you have a specific use for that one texture yeah right exactly i also have glow squid tough cauldrons the new cauldron functionality mm-hmm. glow berries shulker duping mm-hmm. feature it's a new feature uh the moss blocks dripstone Glow lichen and powdered snow in the B category. So pretty large category. Well, let's not go too far because my B is, I think, almost all encompassed with your B. So I have glow squid, the new ore blocks, just because of the texture. Uh, While the texture is not great, I actually do like the new texture and I can see me using it somewhere. Glow berries are cool because it's a light source, but because it's such a crappy food item, I didn't put it any higher. Uh, when you said shulker duping, we need to also specify you're not duping shells. You're not doing yes. anything against game mechanics. So if a shulker shoots another shulker with a, a shulker bullet, 
and we mean the actual mob, it will create another shulker out of nowhere. Yep. So that's shulker duping, not not taking advantage of mechanics to get you extra items. It's creating a new mob out of nowhere, which means shulker farms are now a thing, and you don't necessarily need to hunt for in cities all the time, which is great for multiplayer servers. Single player doesn't make much sense to do it because in cities are abundant, but on multiplayer servers where everyone's using the crap out of shulker shells, this is a great thing. Yes, that's exactly why it's there. It would be higher up on my list if it wasn't for the fact that getting shulkers in position are such a pain in the butt. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to farm, even though they Mm -hmm. give you that feature. It's definitely going to be a pain. Yeah. I've got dripstone here because they cause damage to mobs and their ability to create lava sources and water sources is really cool. Yeah. Glow lichen I have here. I have azalea bushes here because I actually like azalea bushes. I think they're a cool decoration block that I'm actually going to use like quite a bit. So I bumped that all the way up to B. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Like I have dripstone also there i i saw dripstone Mm -hmm. as just being a block itself but it's just so cool that it actually has features to it yeah i mean i i could definitely see how it could damage a mob but being able to fill cauldrons is Mm -hmm. something unexpected i like the cauldron thing i have it on b but not as much as you we'll get to that Uh uh-huh cauldrons are not on b for me Glow Squid is the only mob that I have this low because I voted Isolager. Chilliger. Chilliger. It will always be a Chilliger to me. I I really want to call it the Chilliger, but I have a feeling people are going to get confused. I voted for the Glow Squid, and I still put it at B. Yeah, I like the look and everything, but uh, it gives us something. The item, mm-hmm. on the other hand, is great. Yeah, notice how we didn't say glow ink was in B, just Mm. the glow squid. And mainly because it's a retextured squid, I would have liked to see it have a bit of a different look than just a retextured glow or just a retextured squid. Don't get me wrong, I think they look cool. Yeah. And the fact that they glow underwater is really cool. But I would like to see maybe it's tentacles. Maybe it's one of those squids that have the two long tentacles compared to all the other ones. And maybe a more of a pointy head. Yeah. Something like that would have bumped it up a little bit higher. But because it was just a squid retextured, mm-hmm. I dropped it to a B. If it, if it had what I talked about, I would have thrown it up to an A because I think it would have looked super cool and definitely a different look than the regular squid. But We both have glow like in here, and I just want to say I love the, the use of ambient lighting with the glow like yes. in that's why I put that there. More lights, more lighting effects, I'm always mm-hmm. all for. Okay, so the A category. I have oxalotls, goats, glow ink, smooth basalt, the crystals, mm-hmm. uh, calcite, copper, and copper blocks, and rooted dirt. I have oxalotl, goat, glow ink, smooth basalt, crystals, calcite, copper, Copper blocks, rooted dirt, and tough. A little bit different, but pretty similar. A little bit different. Uh, goats, for me, would be in the S tier if you could ride them and do the ram functionality I talked about earlier. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I would throw them up there. I'm all on that train. Let's ride some goats. And the screaming ability. <laughs> and the scream up. I love how <laughs> they scream. It's so uh, great. I want to be able to ride a goat and make it scream like you're honking a car horn. Right. Oh, my God. (laughs) That's beautiful. That'd be great. Uh, Crystals are only up this high because of all the other cool functionalities they have. Crystals Mm -hmm. by themselves, to me, aren't really cool, but because they can be crafted into everything else, I kind of forced myself to put them up this high. Right. Yeah, you're going to want them. Copper's cool, but it's not the coolest of cool, so it went up here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, new ore. It's hard to dislike a yeah. new ore. I really like mm-hmm. the calcite block more than the mm-hmm. tough block. That's why I have the calcite above the tough. Yeah, I have calcite and tough both here because I like both textures and I can see myself using those. T- calcite is the diorite texture I've always wanted. Right. Yeah. So 
I used to like diorite until calcite came. Now I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah. Forget diorite. Yeah. Smooth diorite. I like tough because andesite is one of my favorite blocks, and tough feels like a- another version of andesite. Yeah, could go great with andesite. Mm-hmm. Also, we got smooth basalt here, which is also oh, yeah. a fantastic looking block. Yeah, basalt. I used a ton of basalt in my base this season. So to have another basalt, I would have put it in the S category if it had stairs, slabs, walls. Ooh, definitely. All the, all of these textures would have been put up there if they had that. Right. Just saying. Uh, we got rooted dirt here too. I like I like different dirt variances. I like to landscape mm-hmm. and stuff. So I think. I'll be using that a good bit with, uh, you know, yes. the, the coarse dirt and the regular dirt. Same. Literally, I think all of my texture blocks, except for the ore textures, were put up here just because I've, I have really have liked what these textures are. Mm-hmm. Uh, so S time, right? S, yeah. I think my S list is longer than yours, so I'll let you go first. Yeah. I went with tinted glass is the number one. Mm-hmm. Love it, love it. Uh, deep slate, the waterlogged rails feature, mm-hmm. and the light source block. That's more of a creative thing, but it's such a great idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's going to get in survival with the data pack. Oh, I hope. But yeah, just those four things I put in my S. I have tinted glass, deep slate, waterlogged rails, light block, and this is where I had glow ink. I dropped it down at the last second. Because glow ink's really cool, but it could have been better. And I think if it actually glowed, it would have made it up here. But because it didn't, I dropped it down at the last second. And then my final S-tier cauldrons. Yeah, you got them up there. Cauldrons are the new (laughs) hoe. I've been wanting to say that phrase ever since you made this tier list idea. (laughs) Now's your chance. <laughs> now I finally get to say it. Cauldrons are the new hoe. So they've got so many cool uses now. They're finally not just a decoration block, a water holding block. We can hold infinite lava sources now. That's awesome. Can hold infinite water sources now. That's great. Can hold powdered snow. Awesome. Yeah, I forget about powdered snow. And if I'm not mistaken, they have functionality with dispensers and buckets. So you can automate farming these items, which is awesome. Uh, is is that a thing? You can... I'm, I think it's a thing. I'm not sure. Even if I it's mean, not I... a thing, if, even if I'm wrong, and I could be, it still goes on the S tier for me. Yeah, because I hear about how you can automate with the cauldrons now using the lava, and that's what people are more mm-hmm. excited about. And the only way I could think it is a dispenser. If not, mm-hmm. it would be manual, so you, you're probably right. Yeah. And let's not forget about tinted glass. Deep slate, that texture is so cool. Oh, yeah. I'm going to use deep slate everywhere. Stairs and slabs. Stairs and slabs. Thank you. We got stairs and slabs. S tier. S automatic. Mm-hmm. S for stairs and slabs. Yeah. Waterlogged rails just because I get so tired of my rails getting washed away. <laughs> That's the only reason I have them up there, too. I'm probably not going to have many rails in the water, but, man, the headache of having to replace rails is gone. So, yeah, I like it. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah. I hope this was a better way to have explained. We didn't really get into the blocks and items themselves last week. And that was because we were kind of unsure on how to do it. At least I was. I'll take most of the blame for last week's episode. This week feels like a much better way of doing last week's episode. Yeah. And um, there might be some things that we left out. Please let us know if there's mm-hmm. something we left out that we might need to throw in there. Maybe we'll put in the in the comments on Discord what we think of it. Oh, no. I'm going to say it right now. We have one 118 bundle. As our uh, Z tier. You have it as a Z tier. I have it as a double Z, lowercase Z, negative 153 tier. And it's not because of my just disdain for bundles. I see bundles as a huge missed opportunity. 
And that's why I hate on bundles. I don't hate bundles just to hate bundles. I hate bundles because of the missed opportunity from bundles. Right. That being said, they've taken bundles off 117, moving to 118. So I'm assuming they understand that and they're going to try to give bundles some cool functionality. So I am hopeful mm -hmm. for bundles in the future. I will be team bundles if they can get some cool stuff worked out. And I think they will because it's Mojang and they've they've hit it out of the park several times mm -hmm. lately. They've had quite a few people mention how they don't like bundles. Um, yeah. I don't think anyone's like real excited about bundles like anybody, no. period. So, <laughs> no. yeah, we did that just for fun, put bundles on there all yeah. the way down at the bottom. Well, I, I knew people would go be like, well, does hate bundles just to hate bundles? And when I saw it on your Z thing, I was like, well, yeah, I'm going to kick it in the ribs a little bit. But it's not because I hate bundles just to hate it. I, I see bundles as a missed opportunity. And I think Mojang sees that also. And they're on it. Yep. Anyways, this show has lasted quite a bit. We need to go ahead and wrap it up or Carl's going to get mad because he's gone back to work now. So awesome for Carl. But I'll, that also means it takes him or he has less time to work on the show. So let's wrap it up for him. And he keeps his sanity. Yeah, we did cover a lot of stuff, and I hope you guys enjoyed yeah. all that. hope this makes up for last at last week's episode. But I want to say a huge thank you to all of our patrons who are supporting the show. Our Milk Level patrons are Omni, Chief Big Bear, Croc, Deadwalker, Fragile Rock, Obeep, Stone Figure, and Whitey Whitey. If you would like to get access to exclusive benefits and hours of extra content each month, please consider joining at patreon.com slash thewitheringeffect. And if you like the show, you can share it with all of your friends and on social media. If you listen on Spotify, follow us. Or if you listen on Apple Podcasts, leave us a nice review. Doing any of these really helps the show reach more listeners. If you'd like to get in contact with us, send an email to podcast at thewitheringeffect.com. Tweet us, leave a voice message, or join our Discord where you can have a chat, where you can have a chat with everyone who works on the show and fellow listeners. All the links will be in the show notes. This show has been brought to you by Jimbo and myself, but also our digital producer, Carl. He helps make sure the show ends up where it should be. And the amazing music you hear in the intro and outro is created by the one and only Decoy. Everyone's social media info can be found in the show notes. You guys have an awesome. Thank you so much for getting withered with us. You should probably go drink your milk now. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>